Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a brand new device, which I think a lot of people are gonna like. Currently, we only have one device like it within the Unify lineup, and that is the original UNAS Pro. But in this video, we're gonna be looking at the UNAS 2. The UNAS 2 is a desktop NAS with two hard drive spaces, and it could be powered up with PoE++ with a 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface. If you're looking for more capacity, they will be coming out with a couple different models. So we're gonna have the UNAS 4, we're gonna have the UNAS Pro 4, and we're also gonna have the UNAS Pro 8. We will only be focusing on the UNAS 2 for this video, but I will do future videos on those models. If you're thinking about picking up any of these new NASes and wanna support my channel, I do have affiliate links, which are in the description below. So now let's take a closer look at the UNAS 2, get the hard drives installed, get it online and set up. And this is the UNAS 2. I really like the design of it. And like I said, this will be a desktop NAS. At the front, we have our LCM, which is gonna tell us things that's going on with the NAS. And we also have this USB-C. On the top of the NAS, we have our Ubiquiti branding. And then if we turn it around, we have ventilation holes at the very top. Looking on the inside of the NAS, we have our 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface. And this is how it's gonna be powered by either a switch with PoE++ or the included PoE++ adapter. Also on the bottom, we have our reset button, which I will have to reset this unit. I've had it about a month and a half for testing and it's been working really great as my backup NAS. You may be wondering where we're gonna place our hard drives in. It is right here on the bottom. We need to take this out. To take it out, all we need to do is click on this button and then pull up. This NAS only handles two drives, which will be in RAID 1. You can do the expansion with the USB-C. The drives that we'll be using is four terabyte Western Digital Red Plus. We need to put our hard drives in here and it says SATA controller at the top. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure our pins are facing the correct way. Now with our drives in place, we need to grab our UNAS2 and insert this into the NAS. All we need to do, we need to grab the drives and we need to put them into the slot and then we're just gonna push down. And now that is in place, there is this locking mechanism that we could turn on so that these drives don't come out by accident. I have a 2.5 gigabit switch that has PoE++ on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug in the ethernet cable to it so that it gives it power. But if you don't have a switch that does PoE++, you could use the included adapter. We can now see that the UNAS2 is booting up and we could see on the LCM that we have our Ubiquiti logo. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reset this, then we're gonna get the initial setup done. The UNAS2 has been factory defaulted and we could see within our Unify network application on my phone that a new device has been found, which is the UNAS2. So we're just gonna get the initial setup done on the phone, then we're gonna move over to Site Manager. So we'll click on setup. Now we can see that it's connecting over to the UNAS2 and we need to give it a name. I'm just gonna call this Mac Telecom UNAS2 Backup. We could see our different storage and it is currently healthy where we have two four terabyte hard drives in it and we could see hard drive one and hard drive two and we'll press next. Now this is setting up the Unify OS, so we're gonna go over to Site Manager and take a look at the UNAS2. I'm over on my UNAS2 through the Unify Site Manager and we need to set up our storage. So we'll click on that button and then it's gonna say Storage Pool 1 and we need to add drives. We only currently have the two hard drives because this is only a two bay NAS. So we'll add the drives and it says RAID Group 1 and we'll add them both in. So we're gonna have capacity for four terabytes and then protection for four terabytes as well. And we're gonna create. It does come up with a warning saying reformat drives to create new storage pool. All data on selected drives will be erased during reformatting. This action cannot be undone. We're gonna click on I understand and want to proceed. The storage is now fully operational. Let's go ahead and look at the specs of the UNAS2. How we do that for any UNAS is click on the dashboard and then you're gonna to wanna to click on the name that you've given your NAS. So we'll click on the name and on the right hand side, you can see all the information popped up. So we have our status, we have our model, our firmware, and it's showing us the temperature of the CPU and then it's doing our system uptime. We also have our network interfaces and we have our MAC address. We could see the system performance or so CPU utilization and I'll put an overlay showing you which CPU it is and then we have our memory which there's four gigs in this. Another new feature of the new Unify Drive update is our fan mode. So we have three different ways that we could go. We have quiet which is minimum noise, 
higher temperature, we have balance, which is even cooling and noise. And then we have cooling, maximum cooling, more noise. So you could choose which one you want to turn on. Now, if you've used a UNAS before or you've seen videos, this will look familiar to you. You'd see at the top, it says for optimal speed, use the local portal or mount drives, which we will mount a drive or an SMB with our windows. On the left-hand side, we can see the port. We are connected at 2.5 and we could see the temperature and the status is online. Scrolling down, we could manage our storage pools and we could also set up backups, which we'll take a look at in a minute. And we have our different file services as well as our users. On this UNAS, we only have the one user, which is myself. On the left-hand side, we could see that we have all of our files and we could do a search in the drive, but there is nothing in this drive currently except this shared drive example. I'm just gonna rename the shared drive example to Mac Telecom UNAS Pro Backup. For our usage, we're gonna use all the four terabytes because this is just gonna be a backup of my UNAS Pro and then I'm gonna save that and all admins have access. I'm gonna create one more shared drive. This is just gonna be for testing. We're gonna move some files over through SMB and see how fast it goes. So I'll just name it testing and we'll give it that full four terabyte limit. Let's get our SMB set up for our Windows client. So if we go over to services, you're gonna see that file service credentials are required to mount SMB. So I'm gonna click on that. Brings me to my only user, which is Cody McCallum. And if we scroll down, we have our assignments and that's our file services and time machine credentials. So I'm gonna click on the box. We're gonna give it a username. I'm gonna do Mac Telecom and then a password. I have File Explorer open, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the left-hand side and right-click on Network. From here, we're gonna map a network drive. And this is gonna be slash slash 192.168.10.178 and then another slash. And where I got this is from my UNAS2. You'd see that the address for Windows is the IP address. Your IP address will be different. Instead of finish, I'm gonna just click on browse and we're gonna see that we have 192.168.10.178 and it will prompt us for our username and password that we created for that one user. Now that I have it, it's gonna ask us which folder that we want. Do we want the Mac Telecom UNAS Pro Backup, Personal Drive, or Testing? I'm gonna just pick Testing and then we're gonna press OK. Within our File Explorer, we're now able to access that shared folder called Testing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do two different tests. I'm gonna do an iPerf test first, and then we're gonna do a test transferring files from this computer, I think it's about a 10 gig file, over to the UNAS2. To do the iPerf test on the UNAS2, we need to enable SSH. So we're gonna go over to our control plane, we're gonna click on console, and we're gonna scroll down, and you'll see SSH. We'll click on the radio button. We're gonna enter a password for the SSH. Once we have the password in, we're gonna press on enable. I'm gonna open up PuTTY and I'm gonna put in the IP address of the UNAS2, so 192.168.10.178, and I'm gonna press open. The login for this will be root, and then the password will be the password of the SSH that we created. Now we're inside of the UNAS2. What we need to do is type in iperf3-s, and this will make it a server. If you don't see that iperf is available on your UNAS2 and you want to test this out, you're going to have to do the command sudo apt install iperf3. Once you press enter, it will download iperf3 onto your UNAS. I already have it installed, so we're just going to do iperf3-s to make it that server. The server is now running on the UNAS and on the right hand side, this is my Windows PC that I'm currently on. And this is also connected at 2.5 gigs. So we need to run iperf on this and then do dash C and then the IP address of my UNAS, which is 192.168.10.178 and press enter. And from that, we were getting pretty close to that 2.5 gig limit. We were doing about 2.2, which is nice to see. The next test we're gonna do, we're gonna transfer files from my desktop over to the UNAS2 using SMB. At the top of my screen, you could see that testing shared folder that is on my UNAS2, and then we have the UNAS2 test. This is only actually about 2.8 gigs, but we should be able to see some speed out of that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drag and drop it into that testing shared folder. We could see we're doing about 250 megabits per second. It dropped a little bit there and it will bring it back up. So we're at again about 250 overall, which is speeds that I would expect for this device at a 2.5 gigabit ethernet link. The main purpose that I'll be using the UNAS2 is to back up my UNAS Pro data to it, but we could also do other backup types. So we have remote UNAS, we have a SMB server, 
or we could do a bunch of different cloud services. So we could do Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, Amazon S3, Wasabi, and Backblaze B2. But what I'll do, I'm gonna set up that backup from my UNAS Pro over to the UNAS 2. On the left-hand side, I have my UNAS Pro, and then on the right-hand side, I have my UNAS 2. We're gonna create a backup task. I'm gonna call this backup, and then we'll do two, UNAS 2. We're gonna select data to back up. So I'll click on this and I'm gonna do my videos. And then that's pretty much it that we wanna do for this and we'll press select. Now we need to select our destination. And if your UNAS is on the same network, you're gonna see it in the drop down list. If the destination UNAS is physically at another site, you could always connect them through site magic. Mine are on the same network, so I'm gonna click on the drop down. And you could see that we have the Mac Telecom UNAS2 backup. It found the server and we could see that the server is connected and we need to select the folder. On the right hand side, currently there is nothing in there. So I'll select destination folder and this is gonna be our Mac Telecom UNAS Pro backup and we're gonna press select. Here we could do a couple different rules. So we could do folder updates or folder replacement. I'm just gonna do folder updates and you could also put it on a schedule. Daily at 12 a.m. is fine for me and we're gonna create the task. Now it says initiate the backup. Would you like to initiate a backup right now? Which we're gonna do, so we're gonna create and we're gonna backup. After a few minutes, we could see that the backup is at 87%, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reload this page and we should be able to see some of my videos that are within this that I've also pushed over. And you could keep clicking in and we could see that we have different videos there. So the backup is working how we want. We have my AI key, we have my B-roll, and then we have my YouTube videos of 2025. And that's gonna be my video on the UNAS2, and I really do like this NAS. I think it's a great entry-level starting NAS at a price point that is pretty good, which is $199 USD. You could get it in black, you could get it in white, whichever your preference is. If you need more capacity, you're gonna have to go with one of their other NASs, and this thing has been very quiet. I haven't even heard the drives moving, and it is sitting right beside me. It would have picked up on the mic. Let me know what you think in the comments below of the UNAS2. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.